Hi, my name is Israel Vasquez-Telli, and welcome to The Turntable, a roundtable discussion featuring music and entertainment business students, artists, and anyone with a vested interest in the music business. And today we're gonna to talk about monetization, both old and new. And we're gonna start off by introducing an incredible electronic hip hop musician, Mr. Jay Shaw. Thanks so much for coming through. Man, thanks for having me, man. Like, like I said, y'all helping me out, making me feel more important than I really am, so. <laughs> You're too modest, too modest. So let's talk a little bit about business. So many times we talk about the artist mm -hmm. and the creative side of mm -hmm. the business, and that's important. Um, but artists obviously have to make a living, they have to eat. So let's talk a little bit about ways that you feel most realistically mm -hmm that you're gonna be able to make, or maybe you are making mm. revenue from your art. You're gonna be able to make most of your money touring. That's like pants down touring. A lot of artists, I feel like they don't um, really take too much time into putting into the live aspect because that's important. I mean, yeah, everybody thinks that you make money off of album sales, off of how much I sell on iTunes, how many hits am I getting on Spotify. Um, it's really all your money realistically I feel it's an opinion I feel it's gonna be made touring so working on your live set getting out there getting paid gigs you know becoming maybe a house band you know becoming a regular I feel like that's where you are really gonna make your income to eat you know, indeed, so. indeed and it's interesting I mean if we're gonna talk about mm -hmm. the evolution of mm -hmm. the monetization of uh, the music industry mm -hmm. Historically, on the mm -hmm. artist side, it kind of has always been touring. It's always mm -hmm. been hitting the road and getting in front of people mm -hmm. and being able to make money, not only obviously through uh, ticket sales, but also through the sale of merchandise. Mm -hmm. So I'd love to learn a little bit from our panel list today. Uh, if you could tell me about maybe more creative, distinctive ways that artists are making money today. So maybe something mm -hmm. that's outside of the obvious. So what do you folks think? I think licensing is huge. Um, I guess there's micro licensing now mm -hmm. where there's just these websites that have the house like mm -hmm. all this music and then people, advertisers, different companies, production companies go and they search those websites. So yeah, I think licensing and then uh, maybe creative licensing like um, virtual reality or Snapchat stuff, mm -hmm. you know, we were talking about. Um, just different different ways that are not just traditional, mm -hmm. you know, putting music in a movie or something like that, but maybe some sort of new techie thing with an app or, you know, whatnot, but maybe some different mm -hmm. new creative ways. That as well as streaming. We have streaming nowadays, which we didn't used to. It used to be the artists made their money mostly through touring, but also the physical, like, CD mm -hmm. sales, but now we don't really see that anymore. It's all digitized. It's all mm -hmm. online. And so they're getting really creative with like endorsements and sponsorships and getting different like brand spo sponsorships deals with like fashion lines, shoe lines, um, perfume, cologne lines. Also, I think one of the more interesting, and this is not necessarily brand new because it's been around now for a handful of years, but you know, websites like Patreon that uh, essentially allow an artist to have their own subscription service for mm. whatever it is that they do, you know, mm. more, more than likely on the video side, um, but but it is interesting now with all of these platforms that we have an ability to offer whatever it is that you put on the table, whether it be the physical table or the mm -hmm. digital table, mm -hmm. uh, and make that available to, directly mm -hmm. to your to your uh, fans. So, what are your thoughts about making money in conjunction with a third party, uh, maybe through sponsorship, maybe through endorsement? I would like to add that this is a topic endorsements that is no longer just applicable to you know the top 1% of success in the music industry like i think of Britney Spears with Pepsi in the early 2000s mm -hmm. like that was sort of like the picture perfect endorsement deal that you'd see but now this is becoming relevant to artists with multiple levels of degrees of success so yeah. you can have mm. you know a couple thousand people showing up to your show or you can have a couple hundred but they're with regional sponsorships through whatever corporation i mean this can apply to you now as a young artist or mm -hmm. it can apply to a superstar. So when it comes to the question of selling out and ethics, I have a feeling in the future that entire concept is gonna be sort of evolving as people yeah. are going to be you know, connecting with a big company like Bud Light and they might send like 60 beers to their show. Now they just cut alcohol cost. Mm. So I think that's something definitely to add and keep in mind that this is relevant to the young artists mm -hmm. and the old artists and you know the, the all degrees of success. Indeed. They Indeed. have to. It's really important to make a living. Mm -hmm. Like now 
I mean, you have your streaming, but like you said, it's not giving you that much. It's just mm -hmm. like pennies on the dollar. And of course, new artists aren't going to make money right away off of that, no. but it is an income like for a lifetime. Mm -hmm. It is going to keep on giving you royalties and royalties. But I think at any level of success from a mm -hmm. little indie local artist mm -hmm. to the level of Adele, Beyonce, mm -hmm. you can definitely get endorsements and sponsor sponsorships and deals and like I even know an artist in Nashville who only has a fan base of like a thousand people mm. and she's sponsored by sure microphones mm. so it definitely helps I mean you want to make a living you want to build an empire you want to have a legacy to le leave to your kids so you kind of have to get creative and find different revenue streams in order to make that happen because you aren't making so much money off of just the music itself now and it yeah. could be something as great as you know a check for a couple thousand couple hundred dollars or just like I said like couple bottles of uh, liquor for your show and yeah. you know now you're no longer supplying that and I think that that's a, a beautiful evolution in our industry for the younger less successful musicians so yeah I think the main problem is just most artists don't know that what you're really ch you're not chasing a quick dollar but you're chasing residual income mm -hmm. money that's coming mm -hmm. in while you're sleeping that's that's the type of money you want you want that money that's going to keep building up. You don't want just the end, the instant, oh, here's 60 grand. No, nah, you want something that's going to be building up yeah. over time while you're sleeping. Indeed. How do you feel about asking support on a financial mm -hmm. level from your fans? Your fans will support you, but they won't if you don't ever ask. You know, the biggest thing with most artists I know with me is it's scary sometimes because what it is, you're scared of instant rejection. Like, oh, I went through, I created this whole kickstart, I made this dope video. It's been about two weeks, nothing. I haven't got a dime. And what it does, it hurts your ego. It hurts your ego. And maybe you need to go back and see maybe are they fans or are they people who just passing through and like, oh, okay, he's on this wave, so I'm going to listen to it. You know, it's building that core fan base. Ask your fans. But here's the thing. Don't just ask them. Connect with them. You know what I'm saying? The reason why they're going to invest money in you is because the music that you're giving them is doing something for them. Mm -hmm. I think mm -hmm. that it's almost like what you're saying. Mm -hmm. I, I entirely agree. The mm -hmm. art of asking is now s synonymous with, you know, the art of creating a true connection. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Creating uh, a less space between yourself mm -hmm. and your fans yeah. and I think Amanda Palmer that, that you mentioned does an excellent job of, with that she mm -hmm. she um, was talking about how she uh, when she'd go on tour she would stay with her fans they would open up their home for her and she would stay with them like the that that sort of uh, connection makes makes you as the musician more susceptible to receive help mm -hmm. because they see you as something attainable as opposed to a, s a superstar that you'll never be able to interact mm -hmm. with with more mm -hmm. than maybe 10 seconds if you pay several hundred dollars yeah so creating that connection is key for sure and it's not enough to just like make the kickstarter campaign and just like leave it i've donated it to a kickstarter campaign in the past and it's because they pro they kept providing things of value like putting videos up and trying to just keep the audience engaged and like reminding people like constantly every single week that the Kickstarter campaign was up. And so that's like the big thing. I think by connecting, it's because you're putting things out of value. Like it really means something to that yeah. fan base. And I think too, there's been a little bit of a paradigm shift where people I think now are, are happy to, at least I'm happy to give an artist money. Mm -hmm. um, whereas I know in the early 2000s when, when the digital revolution was happening, I was almost like, why would I pay for this? I almost was outraged to have to give any money. And now I'd rather overpay because yeah. I know I'm supporting the art. Mm -hmm. And if I want to hear great music, you know, they need to make money somehow. It's not just, uh, you know, money's not flying out of the air. Mm -hmm. So Indeed. you can't get everything for free, free shows, free mm -hmm. music, you know. You, you know, I, for me, I, I want to pay now. Mm -hmm. And I feel like there's a little bit of a cultural, I mean, I feel like everyone was stealing in the early 2000s or whenever that was happening. And but now people seem inclined to, to, you know, give money, especially if you're a hardcore fan and you love yeah. what they're doing. You know, it's like, I want to support you. And I feel like there's a little bit of that um, going on. Indeed, indeed. And, and that kind of is a segue to probably the last thing we're going to talk about today, which is the future. What, what are your predictions for the future? I don't know if this is super futuristic or anything mm. like that, like holograms and whatnot, mm. but, um, <laughs> but house concerts and things like that we were talking oh, about. Yeah. Yeah. So maybe, mm. you know, not thinking of it like I need to go to an arena or I need to go to these places, but connecting on a more personal level with your audience and, you know, maybe mm. staying the night or, you know, they put you up and then they charge people and it's real intimate and um, you're connecting in a, in a great way and making money doing that. Um, 
So I, you know, I think that that could be something that maybe will grow in the future. Indeed. So Airbnb for your favorite artist. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And for me, like it's not the standardized way now. I mean, it's like more like touring and streaming and other stuff. But I think like licensing is going to have its moment in the future mm -hmm. because you know you go on Snapchat every single day. You're looking through the filters, and you'll see an artist song there. Um, like Charlie XCX had like a song a couple months ago, and then artists keep just mm -hmm. doing that. And they get just really creative, like where you find music. Like you walk around and I hear music everywhere. I'm at Subway eating at Sandwich. I'm at the mall shopping. It's just literally mm -hmm. everywhere. And you have all these new apps that can reach just every single age group, your kids, your teens, your tweens, like apps like Smule, which is a karaoke. You have apps like Musical.ly, which the 13 year olds like love. And there's people who are famous on this app called Musical.ly and get, they get millions and millions of views. And so, Getting creative with your placements and your music licensing is going to help artists, and that's going to be a big monetization in the future. Indeed. I think on that note, obviously, you know, there's more and more media being created every single day by everybody and part of media, whether it be visual or otherwise, there's music in there. So I think it's important to keep in mind that, you know, people love music and they want to use music, and uh, we're seeing that evolve every single day. So on that note, see you next time.